Welcome to the sixth edition of Mind and Memory. It's a series that I've called uh, Mind and Memory, covering subjects uh, of abuse, trauma, mental wholeness. In this session, I have a guest with me who I'll introduce in just a moment. This is on the subject of happiness. As Christians, of course, we use the word joy quite a lot. I think this is going to reveal quite a bit to you. Let me read this out so I get the introduction good. What would you say if I told you that you can be happier in only minutes a day using a simple series of two-minute science-based practices backed by Scripture? You'd probably, you'd probably say, yes, I'm in. Well, here to tell us more uh, is my guest and friend, positive psychology practitioner and fellow Christian, <laughs> I think I got it right, Dr. Vaughan Ginter. God bless you, Vaughan. It's so good to have you with us. And uh, you've got five, I think it's five exercises to help people in this subject and uh, I trust that you'll be listening to this, save this, share this with your friends. Once again, welcome, Vaughan. Thank you very much. Thank you very, very much. I'm, I'm very, very happy to be joining you. And as you've touched on in your introduction, we should really start off by talking about what we mean by happiness, because yeah. uh, I think most people have the, the worldly view that happiness is simply moments of pleasure. Yeah, and sure. there's there's nothing wrong with that. I, I I do believe that God is very happy for us to have fun, but I think there's more to it. I and, agree. And as you as you mentioned, the word joy joy appears throughout the Bible. Yeah, and it's inextricably linked to our purpose and meaning. Yeah. So, if you think of um, maybe if you do a lot of exercise, I understand you're on a bit of a, a health kick this year. That I am. <laughs> I'm sure some of those workouts, you're not experiencing high pleasure all the time. No, uh, in fact, sure, I, I've been traumatized sure feeling... by my own. I've been traumatized by my own health kick, but I'm getting there. Yeah, yeah, but I'm sure you're feeling you're feeling joy and you're feeling connected to a, a, yes. you know, a larger purpose than merely merely experiencing pleasure. Even though exercise can be pleasurable. Yeah, and there's also things like building building a business. You might be working long hours in the business or. Something uh, near and dear to my heart, parenting. Parenting can be one of the most frustrating things you'll ever do in your life, but there's, there's few things more rewarding. I heard this uh, quote, and I don't want to steal from anything you have to say. Uh, you're the expert. I heard this many years ago. Happiness is not pleasure. Happiness is victory. Okay. I like that. Yeah. I like that. It stayed with me. Anyway, you're the expert. All right. So now, now, now that we've established what we're talking about when we're talking about happiness, yeah. In this context, we can get on with five exercises. Sure. So these exercises are two minutes each, and uh, I mean, if you can complete all five, ideally that would be great. Yeah. Um, and generally, it's recommended to do them for a month. And research has shown that if you can do them quite regularly and do a number of them each day then the effects can last quite a while, even for people who have quite a low genetic set point for happiness. Mm -hmm. um, so the bar is set deliberately low, so just two-minute exercises, so basically so you, you'll do them. And even though, even though the time commitment isn't huge, they have been shown to be incredibly powerful. Mm -hmm. And they don't need to be complicated. Uh, you'll probably go through this list and think, well, that's... Yeah. There's nothing special about that, but uh, if you did it, you would you would you would feel better. Yeah, um, yeah. So let's let's get on with it. Number one. Right. So this is the gratitude practice, and a lot of people know this as the three good things exercise. So um, either at the beginning or at the end of the day, or or both, if you're really committed, just think of three things in your life that you're particularly grateful for, mm -hmm. and if you can look for uh, novel and new ones each day. All the better if you just keep on saying the same thing each day. Mm. You're not really getting the point of the exercise, which is to teach your brain to scan for what is good in the world. Look mm -hmm. for the positives um, 
and really, really look at life through that filter. Um, and if you want to, if you want to increase the effects of this exercise, you can uh, also do what's known as the doubler as a bonus exercise. And what you do in the doubler is you take an experience you've had in the in the recent past, and you relive that experience as completely as you can. So you might want to engage all five senses or whatever works for you just to completely relive it and ingrain it in your brain. I think the difference with this is it's intentional. Yes. It's not just, oh, I'm grateful for this, and then you get on with the day. This is an intentional period of time. As I say to our church, have intentional times of prayer. We all pray, don't we? And uh, might be driving in the car, wherever, uh, but intentional time. So you're speaking intention, a deliberate will to pause. Did you say for three minutes? Um, yeah, however long it takes. Right. Yeah, one three, minute per thing is fine, but yeah, you, you probably don't want to put a sure. stopwatch on it. Sometimes sure. I get so excited about it, I just keep on going. And, uh, mm. <laughs> it takes yeah, sure. you know, a whole bunch of whole bunch of gratitude. The things I'm grateful for just spring to mind and yeah, it can be a really happy time. Mm -hmm. And the scripture that I've associated with this one is extremely well known. This is the day the Lord has made and I shall rejoice. To yes, amen. Yeah. Yes, amen. Yeah. Now, would you get a scripture like that and then you consider three keys, three things that you're grateful for and consider those. The Bible uses the word meditate, doesn't it? Which really means to consider intentionally to think it through yes yes well we're getting on to that one later but oh. um, yeah we'll definitely have that discussion okay. that's one well well worth having there's a lot of confusion um, there is yeah but we'll get to that okay so number two so this one is uh, the practice of appreciating others and no. so the idea here is that you <clears throat> either um, talk to them in person give them a phone call, send them a message, a text, whatever, just expressing appreciation to a particular person. Mm -hmm. And again, it should be a new one each day for the 30 yeah. days. Um, and it needn't be weird or odd. You don't have to say anything particularly um, life-changing about them, but just just acknowledge them. And um, and what this does is it reinforces your, your social connections because you're most likely, what I've found is you're most likely give a response yeah from the person that is very positive and yeah. it strengthens your relationship because the strength of your social connections is generally agreed to be the number one predictor of happiness in the world and it's equally um equally as predictive of how long you will live as uh, high blood pressure obesity wow. and smoking so yeah we're very we're, we're social creatures mm. um and the scripture that I've connected with that one is, again, another well-known one from Thessalonians. Encourage one another and build build one another up. Yes, which is what they did in the early church, wasn't it? In Acts 2, they ate their food with gladness, simplicity of heart, praising God and having favor with all the people. It seemed like they appreciated and wanted each other's company, and they were glad. Others saw this and wanted to be part of it. Yeah, yeah. I, could say, I mean, at the same time, I think we need to break out of our holy huddle, and not, sure. not for any, not for any particular agenda, but um, there's a lot of safety in, in just staying within your Christian circles. Whereas, yeah. I'm sure ever, all of us have friends outside of that, and um, sure. And we don't want to make them feel like projects or anything at all. But you know, genuine friendship goes a long way. Yes, it does. Yeah. Yes, it does. And to appreciate them. So point two is, or exercise two is, appreciation. Yes, appreciating others. Yes. Okay. Wonderful. Yeah. Wonderful. And people know that, don't they? When you appreciate someone, they know. Yes. Because of the way you talk, the way you feel. And we cannot separate our feelings from these type of deliberate intentions, whether it be gratefulness or appreciation. 
we are going to receive that feeling through our body, which I think has got everything to do with endorphins and that sense of well Yeah, uh, probably oxytocin in that case, but yes, I'm okay. imagining happy yeah. hormones, yes. Yes, yes. So, Point move, three. so number three is quite similar um, in that it involves other people, and this is an act of kindness. Okay. So whether it's something again, quite large or quite small, making a donation or just holding the door open for someone or just generally being considerate, but again, Fine. without an agenda, without expecting anything in return. Yeah, um, yeah. And that that's very, that's definitely good for the soul. Mm. Yeah. Um, and so the scripture that I've connected with that, I mean, there's many scriptures here. I've just chosen the, what there I is. consider the, the, the most direct and relevant. Uh, yep. Ephesians. 4.32, be kind and compassionate to one Amen. another, forgiving each other just as Christ Jesus forgave you. Amen. Amen. In fact, I think kindness is one of my favorite fruits of the Holy Spirit as well. Just yeah. to be kind. Yeah, back, um, back in the day, we were taught Well, it's in children. short supply. It's in short supply in the modern world. It's a real yeah. dog-eat-dog, uh, always be right, always be tough. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, trample on other people to get higher. Yep. So, yeah, I think and, kindness and has been I lost remember, along the way. I remember as children us being taught uh, on a bus to get up for the elderly to let them sit down. Small things like that, small acts of kindness. Where yeah, uh, well, I, I mean, it's my belief that um, kindness is really undervalued and seen mm, as a weakness. Mm, whereas I think yeah. it takes a, a lot of strength to. Look beyond yourself and put others, others' needs before you. It's... And and I think if people do take a little advantage of that, that's not your problem. Your issue is that you were kind. Yeah. You were kind. It matters what you do. If somebody else doesn't appreciate it, it still matters what you do. Yes. Yeah. Definitely. Wonderful. Wonderful. Yeah. So then flipping the script a bit, um, and this this one I'm very interested in your opinion on is the mm -hmm. whole idea of um, I'm going to say indulging just to just to really poke the bear here indulging in, okay. <laughs> in some self care for just a couple of minutes a day so just doing something sure. that's outside of your usual routine mm -hmm. um, that reinforces your self worth so yes. whether that's having a um, cup of coffee with a friend or getting yourself um, a particular particular brand of ice cream or something that you you find to spoil yourself just something like that yeah um, and in the because I was looking a lot I was looking a lot through um, biblical verses for something to back this up and I was having that's having quite a bit of trouble actually and then yeah um, the main one that I saw which is a practice that I know lots of Christians find uh, very uh, centering at the beginning of the day and, and restorative at different times of the day is just taking time out right. so thinking of um in mark uh it says when jesus got up very early in the morning and just left the house and went on to us went off to a solitary place and prayed mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah and of course the woman at the well that whole situation happened there where he had been traveling he goes to the well and he rests he sits the woman at the well comes and he says give me some water and that miracle came out of him resting which is extraordinary well it's uh, all relative isn't it i mean back it in is. those days that would have been considered self-care these days well you know i <laughs> guess we have it a lot easier how do we do unto others what we don't do for ourselves you know, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Well, that's good. But I, I think out of the abundance of the heart, if we practice these skills that you're giving us, which at the beginning you said, look, something like, you know, we, we all probably know these. Well, I'm not so sure. Just because we know doesn't mean we do. Yes. yes and people are wanting mental wellness. You know, wellness is the word, wholeness. But to practice these things, to get them part of our life and to pause reflect do something for ourselves uh, i said to our church uh, not that long ago uh, look we 
you've got to read the Bible. You've got to have fellowship with other Christians. You, you need to worship God. But you also need not, not to diminish any of that because that is so primary in our lives. But you've also got to go down to the beach. You've got to go down to the park. You've got to go for a walk. You've got to smell the roses. In fact, one day many years ago, I walked out to the letterbox to get the mail. And I walked out there with bare feet. And I felt the grass. And I remember thinking, goodness me, I haven't felt this in a long time. And I just stood there and I enjoyed the moment. I, I heard one day that life's not about how long you breathe, but the moments that take your breath away. Yeah. And when you have those moments that you're talking about and intentional moments for yourself, indulge was the word you used. Uh, yes, absolutely. Yeah. Well, that's interesting you're talking about yeah. walking mm. barefoot because mm. it just shows how disconnected we've become from the modern, because oh. there's a name for that now. They call it grounding, just getting your, your feet on the ground. <laughs> I've and heard then, that. Like, I've we, heard that. Because you and I, you can see from my background here, the, the, the waterfall there from our Curtis Falls, from our, yeah. our beautiful area where we live, Tambourine Mountain. But, I mean, we just go and walk there all the time. But uh, in Japan, the practice of spending time walking in nature has become known as forest bathing. Have you heard that one? Forest bathing. No, yeah, I know I'm being bathed in an bit. enormous amount of light at the moment. I'm looking at myself and I'm I'm stunning. To... <laughs> I look like there's a big light on me. There's not actually. I've tried to darken the area. But um, there you go, forest bathing. I'm getting light forest bathing, bathing yeah. at the moment. Yeah, there's, a, there's a new name for everything. <laughs> yeah, there is. Beautiful. I love that. What was that? Yeah. Uh, exercise three or four? Where are we up to? Oh, we're up to number five now. We're up to number so five. Okay. This one I'm going to start with a scripture because, you know, it's really at the start of the Bible. Yeah. Um, and so this is because um, we were talking about uh, meditation earlier. Mm. Um, and the fifth one is actually mindful breathing. And so because breathing is just so it's so vitally important to us right yeah. from the beginning. You know, the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostril the breath breath of life and man became a living soul so it really is the foundation of our being yeah so breath is incredibly mm. important so for two mm. minutes a day yeah i recommend just lying flat on your back and just concentrating on your breathing for two minutes okay and okay. there's a certain technique to this that um because you need to be breathing from the correct part of your diaphragm um, to get to get better oxygen uptake. So it's really okay. simple. So if you lie on your back, have yeah. your feet elevated, so stick them up on a, a chair or even just uh, fold them under you, yeah. and stick your stick your hands across your belly button. Yeah. And as you breathe in, your fingers should separate should separate, and then come back together as as you um, breathe out. Okay. So that's simple. So and, you, and I I can start. see this now because there's some odd. <clears throat> spiritualistic meditating out there. And we're not talking about that. No, I'm it's, coming to that. Yeah, I'm coming yeah, to sure. that. Sure. Okay, cool. That, that's why it's called mindful <laughs> breathing rather than meditation. Some people call sure. it meditation. So this is designed to just, it's it's really an antidote to the ADHD that technology has created in our modern world. Yeah. But we just need time out and to focus on one thing because, um, say eastern meditation is designed to do the opposite right you're designed to experience a state of complete nothingness yes to totally empty your mind which is i think spiritually risky on on two fronts mm. really um yeah, firstly is that it leaves you vulnerable yep uh and secondly the whole eastern concept of basically blending into the universe and becoming anonymous is fairly much exactly the opposite of of, of, of what we've learned yeah from, from Christian teaching yeah exactly the opposite where the the individual the importance of the individual is massive is more yeah. important than the, the you know the human soul is and so is more pause. than the entire world so yeah rather than trying to blend in and become anonymous you know, the human soul and every particular person is critically important to God. What I my take from that, for what you've talked about uh, breathing, uh, is to stop. Just stop. 
take time out for yourself. The fourth one was indulge. I know this. I can't give out to others what I don't already have in me. Yes. And uh, that's where our emotional battery runs dry, you know, runs out, and we're, we're running on fumes sometimes. This is good. This yeah, is well, it's from a Christian be, perspective. Um, you know when, you're, you, when your computer starts clogging up? Yep. And sometimes, yeah. sometimes just giving it a reboot is enough. Yep. Um, and that would be what this is, this practice here. Mm. And sometimes you need a, sure. uh, yeah, a full-scale defrag, but <laughs> that's, that, that's more what I do professionally than... Um, oh, sometimes than I think I need a defrag up here, let me tell you. Yeah. yeah. But usually a reboot it. is sufficient. Uh-huh. These so these five exercises, could you just summarize them now for us? Okay. So expressing gratitude. Yep. Um appreciating others. Yep. Acts of kindness. Mm -hmm. Self-care. Right. And mindful breathing. Mindful breathing. I, I must admit I, I'd not heard of that term before. Mindful breathing. I think that's good. Yeah, well, you, you can do other things mindfully as well. So there's mindful mm. eating, uh, mindful walking, uh, and my favourite, which <laughs> it sounds like a sounds like something you should always do: mindful driving. Wow, that's true. Yeah. Actually, being in the moment. Yes. Actually, being being present in the moment. Yes, and that's very good for human relations as well. Yeah, I um, like this form because a lot of the time when people misunderstand how deep happiness can be yeah. they bail on things that aren't fun anymore so mm. they'll ditch they'll ditch their partner who's who's no longer uh, serving their interests anymore they'll leave their family they'll yeah. break up with a business they'll they'll bolt from a church and go somewhere else they think is more fun all these sorts yeah. of things just because of that equating equating happiness with pleasure and, and fun yeah. and, i mean we don't want to somebody... degrade fun i think we talked about that earlier yeah i mean i don't for a moment think that god doesn't want his people to have fun mm. i think we're created to and to have fun it's just that there's more to more to happiness than than just fun absolutely and yeah. look uh, i uh i think in this fast-paced world i i remember i've got some age on me and i i remember the days where we sent a letter by mail. We called it snail mail, right? And now with emails and text messages, everything is so instant. It's not that it has made necessarily our life easier. It's made our life faster. Did you and, ever go through a, a courtship by snail mail? Uh, <laughs> no. Oh, that's a good one. <laughs> it really, it, it, really uh, it really paces things. My parents met. Uh, this is a very romantic, interesting story. They they met on a cruise ship. Right. And my mother had just had, she'd just gotten out of hospital. She'd had a stroke and was never expected to walk again. But So she was on this walking stick. Right. And my dad had um, just boarded this boat as a, a man who was uh, fresh fresh out of Canada and didn't really know much about the world. And they met. Yeah. And, um, and they, fell, they fell in love instantly. Oh, that's um, beautiful. So he, like pretty much instantly, and he stowed away on the boat so he could spend another ah. week with her. So they spent these 10 days together, I think, and then they, they wrote to each other, snail mail. I don't know how they managed it for a year. I played chess by snail mail one time. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's... yeah. Uh, a game that should have probably lasted two or three hours it did last for nearly 12 months by yes. snail mail. <laughs> that was a long time ago. But also... The fact that I hear it a lot from folks who say, I've got to be there for everyone else. I have so many responsibilities. People depend on me. And if your emotional battery is running dry, if you're feeling afraid within yourself, what Vaughan has shared here, these five exercises, and I'm sure if we do this again, he'll have another five. But these five are critical, I think, for you taking time out to consider yourself. The Bible says to examine ourselves. And that is really what you're talking about as well. Examining ourselves, saying, you know what, I'm going to do 
what do you call that breathing again? So I'll never forget. Uh, mindful is, breathing. Mindful breathing. You know, acts of kindness where they are intentional. I love this. Uh, I hope that you've received something from this interview. Uh, it won't go on much longer, but you can always rewind and listen again. Uh, next time we do this, I'm going to try to have some colour on my face. It's quite... <laughs> anyway, it is what it is. It's not about me. So would you like to close off with a few words, Vaughan? Well, I think also that uh, we have this formula in our society that once we achieve this, that, and the other, once we do this, that, and the other, then we'll be happy. And yeah. it's been shown that this formula is broken. It's broken and backwards. Mm. It actually works the other way around. Yeah. If you, if you do exercises like this, even if you don't particularly feel like it, and become happier in the richer sense mm -hmm. that we've been talking about, then you've actually got the best chance of achieving success. And then it starts circling around and they become happier and more successful and more successful. Yeah. Happier. Yeah. So don't, don't delay doing this sort of thing because yeah. you, you think you need to be in a certain mood. It, it'll actually work the other way around. I, I heard it once said, don't feel yourself into action, act yourself into feeling. Yeah. That's very so we smart. take the action that's first. Definitely valid. And, and what you've said is brilliant. Look, I know f folks, you've, you've just met Vaughan here for the first time. But uh, he's a wonderful Christian man, has helped hundreds, hundreds, hundreds of people over the years with these type of exercises. No doubt uh, you will practice them and no doubt we will have another session together. I pray from these sessions together, these six installments, so we may do another one or two, that you are realizing that within the body of Christ, there, there are resources in your local church. And right here, you have two Christians sharing about happiness. What a wonderful subject. So now before we do conclude, you mentioned to me that there's, what, a Facebook page to follow you and to receive these type of exercises? Oh, yes, what yes. Are Better than a Facebook page, it's, it's interactive. It's actually a Facebook group. Oh, good. And yep. We have over 300 members, and my wife and I uh, run it together, right. and it's called the Happiness Movement. Oh, good. And it's so it's just a, a, a group of like-minded people who um, who just want – it originally started off really dedicated to the, to the science of happiness, which is the sort of thing I've been talking about, but it's really developed okay. more of a communi community-type feel. So, the happiness movement, how do they, because there may be some others called something like that, how do they identify it? Is, is your profile picture there? or? Um, yeah, there's there's a link um, from my um, Facebook page, but I can also give you the link to put on the description. People can just go there directly. Sure. And if they like the look of it, you just answer a few questions. And if I like the look of you, I'll let you in. <laughs> I, li I like the words from Dennis Prager that say happiness is uh, happiness is an obligation. And when I first heard that, I thought an obligation. And he goes on to say that you might not see it as an obligation, but if you are living with somebody that is constantly unhappy or were in the workplace with something that is, someone that is constantly unhappy, you would have wished that they were at least happy a little while for your sake, to make your day a little brighter. So today has been pretty special i think oh good I'm, I'm glad you found value in it and absolutely. hopefully plenty of other people do as well absolutely so look thank you for the time together i'm trusting and praying that people will receive something from this uh, i know they will and they can you know share this with other people this has been the sixth edition on mind memory and uh which has covered really mental wholeness or wellness and this is uh, well no doubt we may do another interview together Vaughan. so god bless you thank you again for being with us and uh it's saturday today so perhaps you also might go out and do something uh, happy oh and absolutely I, there's, and there's I trust, joy all around me already <laughs> and i trust you all listening we'll have a wonderful day god bless <laughs>